Hey everyone, we're live, it says this time. How's everyone doing? Welcome to Know Your Gear QA 126. A uh, little hiatus there, right? We, we went two weeks without a, an episode uh, because I was traveling. <laughs> I think I'm done. I say I think I'm done. I'm done with the big traveling. I have a short little trip coming up. And then Everyone, after that, and says held time. on. <laughs> and funny enough, I had actually muted that before. I hate the new, all the YouTube changes they keep making. Almost seems like weekly. Um, all right. So let's, let's, uh, I already have some questions and stuff to talk about. I have lots of stuff to talk about, uh, about what's happened in the last couple weeks for those who are interested in that. And uh, let's get with some of the cool questions real quick. Um, I just want to make sure everyone can see me. Okay. Yep, you can see me. Okay. Uh, the first couple questions I saw on the stream real fast was uh, I <laughs> was from Zo Zazi. Zazi said, I wonder if Phil sees rolling YouTube chat guitar questions in his sleep. Um, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Although, you know, sometimes it's, it's, uh, yeah, the, I, you know what it is for me? It's uh, sometimes I answer emails until the, you know, right before you fall asleep. And sometimes that gets in your dreams. You're thinking about the questions that you just had and what, what stuff they were asking. Uh, Phil, do you use YouTube chat guitar questions? In, oh, that was the same thing. Next one was from Rick James, 5150. Oh, I love that. Uh, he says, Phil, I just saw a dealer price list and I don't know how you survived owning a store uh, for so long or have the mark, uh, uh, or have the margins on instruments gotten slimmer? No, they probably, if anything, probably improved a little bit. Um, they were pretty bad. And and you got to understand when the market was probably the most robust, which is 2004 and five, you know, tail end of uh, beginning of six before, you know, recession kicked in, the, the margins are actually slimmer. It was actually harder. The, the manufacturers, you know, you, you do what you have to do. So the manufacturer didn't have to give deals to stores. So actually, even though you were selling lots of product, which is good, you were doing well because you were suing, uh, uh, moving lots of margins. But yeah, they've always been tight margins. This is a very tight margin industry. There's other industries that are tight as well too. But yeah, it's a tough thing. No one opens a music store or <laughs> runs a music store to get rich. Um, it's 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 probably it seems like it's easier to be more successful as a rock star than it is to be a successful music store. Um, and when I say that, it's because if you think about uh, like Sweetwater and Guitar Center, they they all um, they were really smart in other ways besides being a music store. So, you know, I think Sweetwater, I think they got a, the same thing as kind of like a lot of companies. They got a bond from the state to grow the business. You know what I mean? They got an investment from their their government. I think that's what I understand. Um, but the point is, no, it's it's a tough market. It's a, but you do it because you love it. I did it because I wanted to hang out with guitar players all day. And now I just hang out with guitar players all day through this. So it's the same for me. Um, okay, what else? Next one. The next question was, uh, hold on. I'm doing this off the pen ones I had. These are ones before we even started. Uh, this one came from Fer Petrucci. <laughs> it says, Fer Petrucci. Uh, hello everyone says uh, if you install a single coil size humbucker so we're talking about the mini humbucker like from DiMaggio or Seymour Duncan in a Strat do you need to change the volume pot does it change from 250k to 500k thank you happy Friday that's a question that always comes up and I like answering it because I understand a lot of people have a lot of doubt about that I personally don't feel you need to change the potentiometer if it was me and I had two single coils or three single coils and I was putting a mini humbucker or a full size humbucker in the bridge I would probably leave everything at 250k. Um, not probably, I would. The uh, the only reason to switch it would be because maybe you want to see if it will open up more highs from that humbucker. But I don't think you'd be losing anything, especially on a mini humbucker. So I'd leave it alone. That would be my my thoughts. Okay, let's hold on a second. We got some some super chats too as well. Um, let me swing back and forth between those. And it looks like the first one is from Scar My Guitar. It says, can't hang Phil, but uh, we support you. Uh, call us. I will definitely call you. I know you guys messaged me when I was gone, but like I said, I have been traveling nonstop. <laughs> been to Germany. Think of this. And just over like, what, 66 days, I was to Germany three times. So uh, if, you, so if you're doing the math on that, 
it takes a full day of traveling to get there and back, which means that's almost a full week in less than two months or in two months, a full week of my time was just traveling. So that eats up a lot of your time, man. Massively. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it now. Like, oh, it's so bad. The airlines are so bad. It's so, uh, it's, a, it's just you're asking for punishments. Uh, and the life of a YouTuber is to fly and go as cheap as you can possibly go. So, you know, so you go the cheapest airline line, um, you know, the cheapest, uh, seat. It's just, you know, it's how it, it's how it goes. So, uh, it's not a comfortable trip by any means. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's find some more questions. What do we got? Uh, guys got a lot of questions about pickups. Don wants to know what pickups would you suggest to add uh, some more twang in my elite telly uh would you take out the noiseless i'm not a big fan of the noiseless pe uh, pickups that are in the elite tellies or in the elite strats um i don't dislike them i just don't love them and the reason is is because i thought they were a little like you're saying more twang i feel like they're opposite of that more they seem to be very muted in the highs they didn't have a lot of punch uh, it just wasn't something i was really digging as a whole, it wouldn't be a deal breaker if I had to leave them in a guitar, but I sure didn't prefer them. Um, and my experience with those is I haven't found anything noiseless that sounds as bright as you want it. So you may have to go with some kind of non-noiseless -no uh, Telecaster pickups. But I will tell you this, my Tele's behind me and my Tele does have noiseless pickups in it. I really like them. They're the BG 1400s, which I think is Seymour Duncan's way of saying Billy Gibbons 1400s very very punchy uh it's, they, sound, they sound almost like a quarter pounder a lot of telly bite a lot of punch but no noise uh so they're not cheap because they come from the custom shop although i think the bridge is now a production pickup and i think the neck is still custom shop either way uh not expensive in the world of boutique pickups by any means but expensive in the seymour duncan world for sure um uh, Jeremy C says, <laughs> Phil, what's the most heartbreaking guitar damage story you have, either your own or from your shop? Uh, for me, I'll tell you what it was. I had two, uh, PRS custom 24s. I had this, uh, if you look at my very first videos, uh, when the, when the channel started, I had this, I call it tiger's eye, but it was, it was a, I don't know, it was brown. It was, I loved it. And I got the green one, which is the one you've seen, you know, as recent last year or so. And it sits in a case. And I got the green one because I love the way it looked. It was just a great looking guitar. So the plan was get the green one, sell off the brown one. And what happened was sometimes how it, how it works, even though they're both the same guitar with the same pickups, the brown one sounded a lot better. It just did. It felt better. It sounded better. It was the better choice of the two guitars. So as much as I love the way the green one looks, the brown one was the better guitar. So <laughs> I decided I'm going to sell the green one, but I had my uh, straps on it, uh, strap locks. So I went to take them off and while I'm taking them off, it slipped and hit the counter or hit the corner of the counter and it had a ding on the bottom of the guitar. And on a PRS, that's the one thing that sucks about PRSs, man, is that if you ding one, it just kills the value. I mean, if you have a ding on a, on a, on a custom 24, I mean, it really kills it. It could kill $500 worth of value in a minute. And so what happened was logically, it didn't make sense to take a, take a bath on the green one. So I kept the green one and sold the brown one. So that uh, damage always sucks because I always, I always question that logic, whether or not I should have just took the bath and kept the brown one. Uh, I do miss the, the other one. In fact, that's why I don't play the green one. As much as I like it, it just doesn't, doesn't feel and sound like the other one did. So, uh, okay. David M M Munez, Munoz. It's M I think it's Munoz. Sorry. David says, Hey, Phil, are the Framus pro range worth, worth the, but ugly headstock sound, feel intonation, uh, or even their China version, their China versions, I think were uh, not doing well. And, uh, cause they didn't really fully release them. I think all the China guitars you see online were just the first run of test models. I don't think they actually did a full production run of those, but back to the pro series. Um, it's tough for me to say, cause I love the headstock because the headstock looks like a Warwick headstock and I'm a Warwick fan. So to me, the frame is headstock is one of my favorite headstocks. So that being said, I don't have a problem with the headstock. There's the easy part. Uh, are they worth it? They're worth it. Framus is in a very delicate, situ uh, delicate 
uh, situation when it comes to guitar purchasing that we've experienced with companies like back with Carvin in the day, where I can honestly tell you, uh, every car or every frame I've ever played has been one of the best playing guitars I've ever played in my life. Um, but the resale is it's crap. So you really have to want it and buy it and keep it. This is not a guitar you get to buy and then go, well, in a year or two, if I, you know, if I fall out of mood with it, I'll move on. Uh, frame is resale value is pretty tough. So you got to hold on to them. So that's the big deal, but that's the incentive to buy them used. And I think I think if Framus was to actually uh, invest or or push some of their marketing, maybe they could get uh, the name out there because that's what kills the resale value. No, nobody's familiar with it. You've seen a few YouTubers with it. Um, obviously, you've seen our reactions to it. It's very good. I don't, I've never seen a YouTuber yet say anything about the quality of a Framus being negative because I mean it's really good. I don't think quality is the issue with Framus. It's a marketing issue. They're just not known, and they're not known, uh, and and m most people don't have experience of them. Okay, uh, Cody wants to know. Hey Phil, how do you like the Ibanez RGD Axion? Uh, I have the iron label, looking to purchase a new one. I really like it. The one right, uh, wherever I'm pointing at, it's behind me. You see it. <laughs> just did the review. I did the review with Ralph. Uh, I really like it because it's something different for me. It's the tune D to D, and uh, I have a project that I'm doing with it. I'm really happy with the guitar so far, and um, yeah. It, it, so you know, it's like uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's funny. Um, uh, what were we talking about? We were talking about some YouTubers. We were talking about, uh, you know, I get a lot of grief on the internet about uh, PRS. People are like, oh, he's such a PRS fanboy. And it's always funny because I'm actually a huge Fender and Ibanez freak. I, 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 I mean, I like PRS. I, just like I like the GNL behind me and the Jackson behind me. I mean, I like guitars. I don't, Gibson, it's behind me. I like guitars. But I really play my Fenders and I've, and, I, and I'm sorry, just I'm branded from youth as an Ibanez player. Like a lot of players, uh, you know, that are around my age or slightly older, they really love Kramers and Charvels, and that's their guitar. For me, it was Ibanez. You know what I mean? It makes perfect sense. I always tell everyone, just think about it for, logically. I started playing guitar in 89. That's when I started playing guitar. A Passion Warfare came out from Steve I. That's like, <laughs> you couldn't you couldn't timeline that any better to brand somebody to a brand. Uh so I am indoctrinated Ibanez branding person to the point where uh, when I hang out with Ibanez uh, people at the Ibanez uh, facility, it's awesome because I can, you know, we just geek out talking about all the models from the early years. So it's my favorite thing. So I, I like, I like Ibanez. Um, hold on a second. I'm trying to get to, oh, here it is. Somebody just did a super chat. Let me move over to that side. Uh, there's a couple actually. It says uh, Max Shade Seven says quick take on the Fender Clapton Strat mid boost circuit worth it? Does the circuit work like a compressor boost? Uh, good with overdrive pedals. I don't think of it like a compressor boost. Um, the mid boost circuit. It's to me, it's not boosting. It doesn't boost volume. It boosts frequency. So I don't think of it as like a compression boost or a boost pedal. Is so much as something that cuts through the mix. You know, kind of sound wise, EQ wise, it helps uh, get those frequencies through. Uh, I've always liked it. I can tell you this. Uh, it's funny that it just it, you're asking this question. It just happened. The Tone King just bought one of those, and he was just telling me all about it, that it's his favorite Strat of all the Strats he was playing. So, um, and the story, so you know, he, I don't think you'll have a problem with me, tell, me telling you the story. He was saying how he has a bunch of Strats, and he doesn't need another Strat, and uh, he liked that Strat so much he, he bought it. And he's like, he was try, telling me, he's like, am I crazy? And I said, well, yeah, if you like it, and you think it's your best strat, then I don't think it's crazy. Uh, Matt Wells says, hey, Phil, uh, you get a call to play at Madison Square Gardens. Okay, this is a scenario question. So I get a call to play at Madison Square Gardens. You have to get their ASPAP. Okay, let's say you live close, but you're not told what you'll be playing. What one guitar and amp are you bringing? You know, it's funny. That's a great question. I enjoy those kind of questions. That's a that's a different take on a scenario question. What uh, guitar and amp would I bring if I was going? Uh, I would probably grab my Green Strat, 
the one behind me, two humbuckers. I feel like I can nail most of the stuff. Um, it would definitely be either that green Strat or my AZ by Ibanez, mostly for two reasons. Um, I You didn't say what time of year. So if it was ice cold outside or super hot, those guitars, for some reason, uh, unlike most of my other guitars, which are they do great, but that one AZ and this that Strat, they seem impervious to weather change. They just stay in tune. That's a magical thing that happens with the guitar when it just always is in tune. It, it's, it's great. Um, I, I, I like them. I can lean them up against an amp. I don't have to worry. Uh, so I take those two, I would take one of those guitars probably closest by proximity. So right now, if it was literally happening right now, I'd grab the Strat and run cause I can grab it in one shot. And believe it or not, the amp I would probably take would be my black, uh, black spirit 200 by Hughes and Kittner. Um, because that amp is uh, so loud and it weighs six pounds. So, I mean, I would just take that with me. Now, I don't know if they have a cabinet if they didn't have a cabinet, I'd grab a cabinet too. Um, so that's what I would take just because it has a red box out. It has everything I need. And in and, and that kind of scenario, and so you know, Matt, this is a great question. Here's why. Because a lot of times, believe it or not, never to Madison Square Garden, but believe it or not, I'm always, I'm always in these scenarios when I have to play. That's exactly how it happens to me. Hey, Phil, can you come jam tomorrow night? Hey, Phil, can you? we're going to do this thing. When? It's at 6, and it's like 3.30 today. Um, and I always tend to grab stuff that's really rugged, uh, stuff that's very practical and stuff that I don't really go, oh, it's got the sweetest tone. <laughs> Just it does the job great. And I don't worry about it so much. So uh, also on a side note, I got something new that I would probably take, but just because it's so new, I don't want to tell you guys yet about it. And because I don't, I don't know, but you, you might be shocked. I might have a new answer. Uh, let's see. What else? You guys got some good questions today. Actually, let me give you an announcement. I have announced it's perfect in that time to give an announcement. It, there is a link. There's two links down below. Uh, there's a link down below for the merch because it's been a while since we did a live show. I put a discount code 15% off for merch. I just did that because we were doing that for a while. It was doing really well for the channel. So you guys seem very happy with it. And then I kind of stopped. So I'm doing it again. There you go. It's good to the whole weekend. I think it kicks off on Monday or stops on Monday. So just let you know it's there. If you're watching this replay, you can save 15%, help the channel out, all of those fun things. Uh, the other thing that's important to know is I want to tell you guys this thing that happened at the uh, last event. Obviously, if you watched the Sharpen My Axe with Tom Quill, I hope you guys did. It was my favorite one. And it was riddled with technical difficulties when it came to camera work. Everything from the camera we took with us to the cameras we used. It, it was just one problem after another, but I was able to piece this video together and put it together. It's my favorite video, even though I think it's probably the worst one put together quality wise, but it, I, I think it's so good. It, it, most people I think watched it, enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. Um, my point with this is uh, that what happened was I asked, I reached out to Mojo Tone and they made the pickups that went in that guitar and the capacitor. Tom loved it. Obviously, I want to thank uh, anyone who, who bid on that guitar. That guitar raised over $1,600. That's right. Almost $1,700 was raised from that one guitar uh, for the charity, which was to, to go to a non-kill animal shelter. They're freaking fantastic, guys. That's crazy. Um, you know, uh, so if the person who bought it is watching this video, if you email me, I'd be willing to send you some more of that footage from the video. There's some cool stuff that I didn't include in the video that I think maybe if you had the guitar, you'd want to know. So there you go. Um, because there's some cool stuff. It just didn't flow right in the video, but it was just interesting insight and conversations me and, uh, Yozy, which is Joseph, the luthier had about the guitar. It was really cool. The other thing that was uh, important to mention was that Mojo Tone, they were so excited because the, I actually had bumped into them. I've known the, uh, John at Mojo Tone for a little while now, and he wanted to work together. You know, he wanted to do something with the channel. And what happened was, um, I don't really interact with companies in a financial way a lot of times. You know what I mean? I don't really go, hey, you know, pay me and we'll do a video. And so I have to find a reason to work with a company. That's really the more importantly. And so um, what happened was that video presented an opportunity, right? I called him up and I said, hey, you want to work with us? You got to, you got to overnight me some pickups. <laughs> and yeah, he did it. What's cool is he was so excited with the video, he asked me if I was interested in doing something else. So in the link down below, if you live in Phoenix, Arizona, um, on October, oh, see, I gotta look, I gotta look because I, I don't wanna get it wrong. October uh, 26th and 27th, that's a sa Saturday and a Sunday, at 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
at Roberto Venn School of Luthery, Mojo Tone's going to be in Phoenix teaching a class on how to build a hand-wired uh, 5E3 circuit, which is a, a, a custom 57 custom deluxe reverb, or not reverb, sorry, custom deluxe amp. It's $1,000, and that includes the $750 kit, all the tools, lunches for both days, and of course the class, and you'll leave the class building the amp. I'm going to be there uh, filming and doing stuff and uh, both those days, so you'll be there, we'll have lunch too, and then afterwards, uh, I'm going to find the nearest bar each night, and we can go have a nightcap, you know, maybe a beer or a, a Coke, it's up to you guys, um, but I'm letting you know that because there's like 10 slots left, and so the link's down below if you're interested in doing that, I highly recommend you do it, I actually cheated a little bit and told my closest friends yesterday, so a couple of them are going because I wanted them to go because it's a, such a good deal. I mean, I don't know how you beat that. You know, the tools are provided, the skills. The other thing is, so you know, in November 16th and 17th, they're doing one in Nashville. So if you're in Nashville at the MI Guitar Craft Academy, uh, you can also do it. I won't be at that one, but uh, we'll talk about it a couple times on the show because like I said, I'm this is what I'm excited about. If you guys notice with the Sharp of my axe, all this, my, my whole mindset is, you know, how do we learn to be better? I don't know how to do anything with amps. I've been trying. It's been a, a, a learning curve for me. So when they offered this out, I was like, I'm up for it. Anybody in my audience, I hopefully, if you live in Phoenix, uh, you'll be a sucker if you don't take the deal, man. Uh, you know, you're going to walk away with a $750 amp. That amp, by the way, is $2,000 if you buy it from Fender right now. And it's hand wired the same way. It's basically the same amp, same construction. So, you know, you got a $2,000 amp for a, half the price and you get to learn how to build it. So... There, there you go. So I'll be mentioning that every time until that, uh, and I'll let you guys know if they, the class sells out. So, which I kind of assume it's going to, so, you know, okay. Um, so on that note, let me get back to your questions. I just wanted to make those announcements. I appreciate you guys letting me kind of do that. Uh, the next, next question is from Don. It says best twang pickups for, oh, I already answered this. Hey, Don. <laughs> okay. Then next non-pin question is, uh, and a lot of you guys are now talking about that amp. Let's see. Uh, Ho Hobo Rody says, I did the 5E, uh, 5E5, or maybe he means the 5E3, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, you know what it is? It's like, I think a lot of us uh, want to work on amps, but they're afraid of dying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? One thing I don't have to worry about working on, <laughs> on a guitar is uh, there's no way that I'm going to, you know, by touching the neck and the body at the same time and something happens and I touch a capacitor, I could stop my heart. You know what I mean? So I, it's kind of it, it's kind of nice to have personal instruction when working with a guitar amp. So uh, there you go. Like I said, links and that stuff down below. Um, okay, the next question is... Hold on. Josh wants to know when I'm going to do a pimp my guitar with Sky My Guitar. I'm never going to do a pimp my guitar. I don't know why the pimp my guitar thing always sounds stupid to me. Um, uh, I think it's because I think the idea of, of that. I remember, like, I was, guys, I think it comes from Pimp My Ride, right? That's why I, I liked it when one of the viewers picked uh, Sharpen My Axe. I was like, I, so you know, my biggest fear <laughs> when doing the repair series was that everyone was going to kind of vote or push me towards the pimp my guitar. So I'm just saying that I just, not, it's, I don't know. I always thought that was so dated and weird and a uh, thing, uh, with scar my guitar. I talked to, uh, I think Sean at scar my guitar through text. My issue is, so, you know, I, I'm doing two guitar builds as we speak. <laughs> so we, when he reached out about doing a guitar build, I'm like, I'm actually doing two guitar builds. And so I'm like, and I'm, been traveling luckily for me the traveling is what i had to get past and when i say get past i there's no more events but next week i'm actually gone again for three days uh but this is something totally different it is for youtube it's for and it's not but it's not for well hopefully it'll be for you guys but it's really for um i've been invited to be on a much much larger channels platform and to do some content with them but um the sad news is sometimes what sucks about you know, doing the live shows, you guys get to hear stuff that, you know, it's, it's just nothing but frustration for you guys. Uh, we're going to do that, but it probably won't come out for months, if not year. You know what I mean? Because it comes out slowly. But uh, so I'm just trying to get past the projects I have now. Uh, <laughs> Joshua says, OK, sharpen my axe. Uh, oh, I did a sharpen my axe. Uh, in fact, there's two sharp axes in editing right now. 
the goal has been with Sharp Max is to get to 20 episodes. And then uh, the idea is with 20 episodes, uh, we believe uh, that we could take that to a, some company um, with the because now the total views on that is in the millions. You know, what I mean, it's like three million views. We could say, OK, look, we want to do this. The audience wants us to do this. This is going to be fun. But we we need somebody to fund it some way. You know what I mean? So besides the free parts. Um, in fact, I just got another parts company on board today for Sharp and Max, which is great. Uh, and like I said, it's great because I don't have to buy the parts. But, you know, like I said, I'm trying to do the the, the, the limit the cost. That's why I wanted to do the one with Tom Quayle. It was great. But just to give you an idea, it's a, I think it's important sometimes because people just see the YouTuberness. Um, to do the Sharp Max with Tom Quayle cost me personally 230 30 euros. I don't know what that is in dollars. So it's 260 bucks. And if you're asking why, because I had to bring my tools with me and it was, and the airline charged me a hundred euros each way for a piece of luggage. So, and of course that wasn't, that wasn't, uh, the, the, uh, when you do these events, they pay my airfare, but they don't pay my luggage and they don't pay anything. You know what I mean? They don't pay anything else. In fact, uh, the three events I'm very excited about doing, but that's where I'm a little tired right now, too, because between the three events, I could have bought a Sur for what I spent going to those events. Um, but I'm happy I did it. I got to hang out with some good friends. I got to make some great content. And um, and I think over time, the content will make enough money to kind of subsidize that back down. And uh, But uh, I can tell you, to be honest, I couldn't even go to those events if I didn't have patrons. It wouldn't even exist in my head as, a, as an expense. So... BB Ninja says 640 people watching and 85 thumbs up. Let's uh, try to get to 100 thumbs up, man. That's a, it's always good. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, somebody says Guitar Hack says million views. <laughs> yeah, I know the channel this week hit another milestone. It's uh, 54 million views on YouTube and I think 18 million streams on iTunes. I think is our number that we hit, which is crazy, off the charts for me to conceive <laughs> so uh and i always laugh you if you want to laugh uh could you imagine if i got half a penny of you i would be never never complaining uh about anything i'd be like let's fund all the sharp and max videos uh, okay so um let's see um where else what else questions do you have uh David wants to know if you have a nice guitar, a Godin XTSA, but you're not always loving the sound of the pickups, you want a second one, you go for a Warmoth build or the cheapest Kiesel. You know, the sad thing is I really like Warmoth. I like the quality and I think there's some some really good merits to Warmoth. But if you were asking me which one would I pick, I would pick a Kiesel over Warmoth any day. And the reason is that at the point now where it costs, if you really analyze the cost, the Warmoth is not much less than the Kiesel. And so you're going to have to finish the guitar yourself with the Warmoth, which is a great thing to do. You get to do, you know, but I think the Kiesel has definitely has resale value. And I know we talk about that a lot, the resale value, but I think uh, somebody sometimes we miss the reasoning why guitar players focus on resale value so much. Music is an experiment in the first place, right? You experiment with music, you experiment making music, you experiment how you think, you experiment with the whole process. The tools, the gear, whether you're collecting or collecting and you know using the gear, it's still kind of an experiment. You're kind of figuring out who you are as a musician. You know, very few of us get to be Brian May and like, hey, I got the right guitar at the right time, and I'm and he can play it and he writes amazing music. And 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 he's just to me is always an iconic idea of like when you get it all right, you're Brian May, right? One guitar, one man making one kind of brilliant, beautiful music you know right but for the rest of us lost souls <laughs> it's you know the person i was uh, you know 15 years ago as a musician is not who i am today uh and maybe because i'm older or maybe because i am more experienced it could be all kinds of factors but so so because of that i'm never naive enough to believe like this is my one thing so sometimes resale value is a factor of this because i i a lot of us have to churn the gear uh to to, to get the next piece, you know what I mean? Um, you guys know this, uh, this uh, when I went, I bought two uh, Ibanez AZs, but I sold some guitars, if you guys followed on the 
uh, reverb. I sold uh, some some guitars off on reverb and some amps to pie those guitars. That's how it that, that's how it works, man. It's just how it's how it's done. Um, okay, uh, Hellface says, "Hey Phil, how is a Fender lipstick bridge different from a Fender single coil?" Um, well, a lipstick. You're talking about lipstick pickup. Um, it doesn't matter if it's in the bridge. As far as I know, there's not different lipstick pickups. There might be one for the bridge, maybe wound a little hotter. Um, they're ceramic for the first part. There's a ceramic magnet in the center of a lipstick pickup, uh, which is much different than a lot of times how the uh, the uh, Alnico slugs, like Alnico 2s or Alnico 5s, are done on the regular single coil pickup. Um, to me, they have a much different sound. They're warmer. Lipsticks are always, people, I think, always think brighter. I think it's because just the aesthetic of it. It's chrome, it's bright. I don't know what it is that makes your brain think it's brighter, but I've never found them to be brighter. I've always found them to be warmer, fuller, bigger sounding, um, and I love them. Uh, here's a trivia question. Um, for those that will remember the first, when the channel first happened, when I first did my channel, you guys will remember my main guitar was my Copper Strat with lipstick pickups. That was when I was the most happy with that guitar, uh, and I played it all the time. But I got so many comments from people saying, that's great, but I don't know what lipstick pickups sound like, so I don't know what your, you know, I don't know what was the pedal and what was the pickups or what was the amp and what was the pickups. So I actually, sw and then I swapped them to something that people could relate to at the time. Um, just to kind of, cause like I said, I was trying to, you know, you're trying to make this content to be helpful. <laughs> so I understood the complaint. You're like, Hey, you have this, you're making content, but, uh, there, you know, yeah, <laughs> we can't figure out what you got. Uh, the next one is from Don. It says looking for noiseless telly pickup suggestions. Um, did that, didn't you already ask that Don? I think you missed it. Um, let me see a second. Make sure this thing's not... Yeah, Don said it twice. Don, um, I'm going to give you the answer, uh, the pickups I use. In my telly, they are noiseless pickups. They're the BG1400 Bridge, which I believe is a production scene we're not going to pick up now. When I got mine, it was Custom Shop. The neck is also a BG1400 pick uh, neck, but that is Custom Shop. As far as I know, they don't make that. It, they are telly sounding. They are twangy. They are fat, and they are noiseless, and I really like them. Um, so, you know, I can, uh, and, uh, BB Ninja is also saying, uh, Joe Bardens, Joe Bardens would be definitely, uh, probably my second choice to those pickups. Like if I ever didn't took those out, Joe Bardens would be what I try next. So I like, I like them. Uh, oh, you're saying not noiseless. He's saying, well, did he say that in his question? Hold on a second. Oh, for non noiseless. So Don is saying not noiseless. Um, I don't know because you know what it is, is I don't think I've ever enjoyed any of the noiseless, not noiseless, uh, telly pickups I've had. Um, so I might not be the right person to ask for that. I've installed a ton of them. I mean, everything, you know, Texas specials, um, the, the, um, uh, the, uh, broadcaster pickups, a good one. I don't know. Anyone got any really good, qu uh, I feel like, you know, I really like my Wiggins pickups. I had them. That's what I had in that before I switched the noiseless, the Wiggins. I love the way the Wiggins sound. I just wanted noiseless. So that's another one I would highly suggest. And they're definitely cool and they're reasonable. Um, William Wiggins is down in Tucson, Arizona. He makes them by hand out of wood, but he will do plastic if you want them to look more traditional. Okay. Uh, how are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. And how are we doing on... Hey, we're doing good. I already did my announcements. Papa Papa wants to know, have you tried King Kenman pickups? I haven't. There are so many pickups. You know, that's kind of like, you know, I, I, sadly enough, I want to try as many as I can. I like pickups. I, I think they're one of the funniest things. To me, pickups and speakers make probably so much of the sound as a total, you know what I mean, per percentage-wise, and get the least amount of discussion, which is kind of funny. Okay. Oh, hold on. Grumpy Mike says, uh, no, he's just a tiny bit of help with the travel costs. By the way, I thought you once did a video on rattle can lacquer, but I can't find it again. Am I misremembering it? Um, you know, I don't remember if I did that or not. I have 660 videos and some are down. Um, if they're older, some have come down, but not very many videos have, are down. So I don't, I don't know if I did that or not. 
Uh, I know I've done something because here's the problem. I, a lot of my repair videos for a while weren't specific on a repair. I was just doing stuff in the video. So even I have trouble remembering, uh, you know, cut what I did in certain videos because I know I've done videos where I've sprayed guitars and done stuff, especially in the sharp my axes and stuff. Um, but um, and I appreciate the the sentiment with the travel costs. Like I said, don't worry about it. I mean, the travel costs were budgeted in for the year. Uh, that's what the the Patreons do. They support the ch channel. They allow me to. To, to look at these opportunities. And that's what all this traveling was, was about opportunities. How do we grow the channel? How do we, you know, sustain the channel, all that stuff. So it's a, uh, so thank you. I appreciate, I definitely appreciate you guys. For, so, hey, just hanging out every Friday is, is awesome. I'm going to do something scary. I got to refresh this screen. So I hope I don't lose it. There we are. Okay. Because I knew it. See, it wasn't showing me so I switched, as you guys know, we had to switch software when YouTube made some changes to the live streaming and I'm still getting used to it. Uh, Bruce says, what do you think about replacing a speaker in a 112 orange cabinet with a full range speaker for use for modeling amps? Uh, I understand what you're going with because obviously with a modeling amp it doesn't really need a guitar speaker because it's not using the, the speaker per se to create part of the sound. So when he says full range, uh, right uh speaker uh you know i understand what you're saying it's like basically saying hey the amp's going to create the sound so why not just go with that um i think you're okay with that i think you're okay either direction i mean if i was using a modeling amp i probably wouldn't use like a green back or something like that i'd probably go with something like uh by eminence that i like that is more of a full range speaker but i think the th i think the uh the theory that you're you're going with is sound I, I would follow it so and then report back and let us know what you what you came up with and what you liked uh, Ramon wants to know, I love my bullet telly, want a Fender higher end telly. Every time I try a Fender, they lack something. What am I missing? Um, you're not missing anything, buddy. The, the, the tr truth is, is that as simple as a Fender is to make, which is slapping a neck onto a body and just putting it together. Isn't it funny how that, that still needs a little bit of magic? There's just a little bit of when it all feels right. And that's the thing. Uh, you know, somebody was, <laughs> somebody, I did a video a couple weeks ago when I did the string alignment and I used this Squire bullet. This is my Squire bullet with my Wiggins pickups in it. And, um, and I have a seventies tuners on it and, um, the bridge is stock and I upgraded the output jack, but it, it's, it's what I use all the time. And I said in the video, I use this guitar every day and somebody put in the comments, yeah, right. You use it every day. And I'm like, I understand probably why you're like looking at the guitars behind me thinking, why would this get used every day? This guitar is sick, <laughs> right? I mean, this neck is just amazing. If you guys remember the video, when I first did this, I even mentioned this is back when I had the store, I went through like 16 and I'm not exaggerating, maybe more Squire bullets. I was just walking, you know, picking them out. Cause I need one for a video and I was going through and all of a sudden I found two or three that were good and I would go between them. And I think it was finally got down and narrowed down to two. And this one just, I don't know what it is, man. You know, even a hundred dollar guitar, they're going to get it right. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're going to get it amazing on accident, right? How could you not? It, you know, if you could make a thousand, let's say if they can make a thousand high end American fenders and one is horrible, why couldn't the same logic apply uh, to a, to a hundred dollar guitar? They make a thousand hundred dollar guitars and one is amazing. So uh, that's probably what's happened with you, buddy. You have, uh, you're looking at like you have an expensive guitar, but you just might have something that's just, uh, you know, the, the guy who did the fretwork did a great job. The neck was right. Everything looks good. So, uh, okay, let's see. What else? Oh, Ben's just let me know I missed the super chat. Don't worry about it, uh, Ben. I appreciate you calling it out, but I'm pretty sure it'll pop. Let's see. Yes. And it's funny, Showman. I like your uh, avatar. It's a Friedman guitar. It looks like a Friedman guitar. Hi, Philip. Happy Friday. I almost... Oh, on, hold on. Let me get to your question. I'll tell you what happened. Uh, hey, Philip. Happy Friday. Have you ever tried a Fender Strat Osonic Dove 2? No. Just got one. Love it. Uh, older model, 2003. Well, now I got to see. Hold on a second. I can't, well, I don't think I can screen share with this software with you guys. I have to look. I'm using OBS. It's so far the software is pretty good. I like it. Yes. 
Uh, no, okay, so the Stratasonic that he's talking about is... So to answer your question, <laughs> Showman Blues, which is really tough for me to answer, is I love the Stratosonic, so you know. The Stratosonic looks like a Fender, but it's a mahogany body. It's a 24 and 3 quarters neck. It came with a humbucker or P90 uh, options. You can get single P90, dual P90s, or dual humbuckers. And it had a hardtail, uh, one-piece wraparound bridge. Uh, Showman... Um, I'm not saying this because that would be n not right of me to say this, but I'm not saying that there's a guitar coming that is custom built that follows those specs. I'm not saying that. <laughs> By the way, great guitar. Fantastic. And yes, uh, you know what? What happened was, uh, so you know, in my search for them, they usually came in yellow or red. And every time I found one, uh, it was always like, you know, just it was a little higher than I wanted to pay or if it was right in that sweet spot because they can go as low as 700 and as high as 1300 and they flux in between those price points. Very great, uh, great guitars from 2003. I think it's something a Fender should have revisited many times over. Um, but there you go. So yeah, love the guitar showman for sure. But, uh, and then <laughs> your Friedman, you have a Friedman avatar, the green, I'm not making this up, that green Friedman avatar you have. Uh, I almost bought a green Friedman guitar when I was at the uh, uh, Gear Street 42. I just was broke. <laughs> this is the last day of the event. I saw this guitar. I'm like, I gotta have this guitar. And I was crunching it, crunching it. And I was like, yeah. And you know what? I really feel great that I didn't do it because when after I left the event, I got to the airport. The, the airline hit me with a bunch of fees. God, the airlines. They're like the the douchebags of the sky. They're just horrible. It's just the craziest thing ever. It's like $11 to watch, you know, to get the screen, to, to watch the screen. It was 120 euro to to take my luggage what they did to me was i paid this is sad i paid for my luggage to go there and then on the way back they said oh i had to pay more because i only paid uh because i had two bags i have two bags because i have a toolkit and i had my thing and they said oh you paid uh, so what happened was anyways they told me i didn't pay enough uh to to take it back with me maybe it was overweight i don't know what it was and it just they hit me again it was just getting painful to <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm just, they did it was horrible. The airline is, they should be run by the government, like the, 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 the DMV. Cause I'm nobody I've met besides the, you know, th those kind of jobs could care even less than they do and charge as much as they do. So, uh, and I don't think I mind the money so much. It's just always the constant shock. <laughs> I always feel like I'm over with it. And then they, they find a new way to give you a fee. Um, Okay, the next, hold on. I want to do, I saw some uh, super chats. Hold on, I'm just trying to get the, uh, the, um, David Mona says, wait, you had to pay for your airfare? I didn't pay for airfare, um, but what happens is these events are bare bones. Hennings was even the most bare bones. Uh, they paid for the flight, um, but they didn't pay, they don't pay for anything else. And so if you're familiar with airlines, the airlines have fees for everything. So I pay for my luggage. I pay to, 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 I, I paid, well, actually I didn't do it. My wife did it. My wife decided, cause I was really wiped out on the way back. She upgraded me. It was another $130 to upgrade me to a seat that had, it's not like uh, business class. It's like, you know what I'm talking about? There's a seat in between business class and the, 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 the seats in the back of the plane where you get an extra, I think you get two inches of leg room. So Cause it's thir it's not, thir it was, it was 12 and a half hour flight. So, uh, so, and, uh, you know, so yeah, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, you get a lot of fees, man. It's just, they like to fee you. I'm just not used to it. I never really traveled a whole lot. So this is traveling a lot in the last year or two has been a big eye opening experience. I can see why a lot of professional musicians are doing, making decisions. They are, cause it does, it gets, gets a little much. Um, yeah, see, Dale says the airlines are nickel and diming everyone to death. You know, Dale, that's the thing that's emotional about this. If you listen to me, and I don't want to get on this tirade about this. It's not so much the fees, because if it was one total price tag, you would just kind of get over it. It's that you're like, oh, okay, it's like a thousand bucks, and then then it's like, oh, and then a hundred dollars, oh, and then eleven dollars, oh, and then this, and then by the way, we don't take a credit card. You got to pay us in cash. That 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 I flew Condor, so you know I didn't know, but I guess they're like the cheap airline. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, they were cracking me up because I had to buy stuff while I was on the plane, which is what you have to do, right? And they didn't take credit cards. <laughs> so I had to give them cash. It was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> and the air conditioning broke. <laughs> so it was 12 hours in the air. It's kind of warm in the plane. <laughs> it was kind of funny. I, I'm, I, you know what? The longer, the longer that goes in my memory, the more I'm going to laugh about it. So uh, there you go. <laughs> Stay at home, everyone. It's funner. So uh, David says, it looks like you had a lot of uh, fun at uh, 42 Gear Street. I did, of course. I have a, you know, I'd have fun at a Walgreens. Uh, so yeah, of course I'm going to have fun. And then more so because like I said, my friends go, which is nice. You know, you meet some, some channels that you really like and respect. Um, that's always cool. You get to make content that you never would have made. Um, the, there was some negatives. The only negatives really, you know, beyond anyone's control. Um, we used, I actually have it here cause I was downloaded. We used these, uh, hard drives. Uh, they came with this great idea to use these solid state hard drives. Um, instead of SD cards. And the problem was they tested them and they were working, but I guess as they were filling up, we were dropping frames. So if you notice, that's why some of the videos, there's frame drops and it's really bad. So a lot of the videos I, I, I can't upload or I'm not going to upload. I'm, I'm giving them to the patron. I'm putting them on Instagram. I'm, I'm, I'm lemonades, lemonade, lemonade out of lemons kind of thing. I'm doing the best I can, but yeah, it's a little max, max headroomy where it's like jumping. You know what I mean? But things happen. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, it does its thing. Okay. So back to questions. We're going to, that's what we're here about. We're talking about guitars. Uh, we have, what else we have? Wesson wants to know, what are your thoughts on the Greco guitars? You will be, Oh, telling you, man, YouTube. Okay. It says you'll, will you be attending NAM 2020? I'd love to meet you and get a picture. Greetings from New York. Weston, a couple of things. Uh, Greco guitars. I've repaired a few over the years, played a few over the years for the same reason, because I've worked on them, set them up and stuff. Uh, Greco guitars are some of those kind of hidden treasure guitars. Sure. Uh, Lotus is another brand I think of like that, um, where I think, you know, so they made some cool guitars. You can find some cool finds. Um, so that's my thoughts on them. Always kind of a cool old kind of Japanese made cool guitar. Uh, well, I'll be doing the attending the NAM 2020. I don't know. I always say, I don't know. I'm going to say yes until I say no, instead of the other way where I usually say no. And then I decide to go, um, right now I've decided, I think I'm going to go. I might change my mind at the last minute. If I do go, I'll be going Thursday just for the day. Um, the reason is, is again, keep the expenses under control. Um, the, the, the fun part of what I get to do now is I get to hang out with you guys. I get to make content. I get to teach. Um, I get to, you know, experience and try new guitars and new things every day. It's a really cool thing. And I'm really, uh, really happy that I get to do this, but it's also, you're, you're always playing, you know, you're always riding the line of, you know, uh, of spending too much and then you're not getting a return on, you know, a return on your investment. Um, and events are tough because literally where, you know, you, when you think about what you make off the videos that you go to film, you just really can never even break even. So it's, it's a cost. And a lot of YouTube channels, which are smart, use these events like NAM and other events is networking with the companies. Um, I spend most of the time watching the companies. Most of the companies don't like me. So <laughs> I used to be afraid to say that because I didn't want to like upset the, 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 but the reality is, is no, I, I, when I went to the summer NAM, I was making a comment to a couple channels. I said, Oh yeah, this company hates me. That company doesn't like me. They thought I was being silly. We'd walk up to the booth and it was very obvious the company had a problem with the, a video I've done. So I don't care anymore. If they don't like what I got to say, I try to do everything with respect. And if they don't, uh, don't like what I have to say, you know, that's on them. It's not on me. I don't think I've ever tried to actively uh, defame any brand or company. I think I just try to tell you guys what I hopefully will help you make a good decision uh, since you can't put your hands on it. But more importantly, I look at my greatest failure as in a review. When I teach, when I'm, when I'm doing repair, when I'm doing informational videos, that's a separate element. Um, but when, when I'm doing reviews, to me, I'm not naive. Anything you buy, you can return. So if you buy something that I said was good in a review or I validated in a review and you get it and you don't like it, that's fine. Return it. But if you get it and you go, man, I don't understand what he was saying. That's the failure. So I'm never going to kind of fluff a review just because that's what I think in my head. The idea that you might, uh, cause then I think I lost all my credibility from them. And if I was, if I was you, I wouldn't watch me past that after that anyways. So 
that's how I think about that. Steve Long says, just bought a Harley Benton CTS24F. Great guitar, thinking upgraded pickups, match the PRS-esque type. Any suggestions? Funny, Steve, I have, but speaking of companies that are now going to hate me, uh, I have that guitar from Harley Benton, and mine is broken. So I was, uh, I'm telling you this because unfortunately my plan was to do exactly that. I bought the green one, the uh, Harley Benton CTF 24F in green, or I picked the green one. I didn't buy it. I asked him to send it to me. And then the plan was to do some, suggest some cool upgrades for it and do some stuff. And it came and it was just damaged. It got a chip on the headstock. The three-way switch broke off and it has two hairline cracks in the neck from where the, the neck flexed in the box. They just didn't pack it very well. Um... I, I reached out to Harley Benton about getting that swapped out and uh, I, I haven't really heard anything back. I kind of got the impression uh, that, you know, that that's the end of that. So I have a broken one. <laughs> so Steve, I have a broken one. I've been debating on doing a Sharp and Max video. Obviously, if they don't want this guitar back, I don't want to toss it in a dumpster. So uh, the good news, Steve, is uh, if, if I don't get something resolved in the next couple of weeks, um, in October, my plan is to do uh, one of the Sharp Max videos with that, and we'll donate it to uh, probably the Alice Cooper charity or Guitars for Vets or uh, maybe even Melissa's uh, after school program, anything like that, you know, do some, some stuff. So, so my suggestion uh, is, I don't know, because <laughs> I, I was planning on looking at that vi guitar and figuring it out. So hopefully, uh, Steve, I can help you and, and, uh, and do that stuff. Sometimes it doesn't work out. That, by the way, uh, should hopefully disparage any of the comments that people have all the time when I get product and they go, yeah, but you're a YouTuber and they send you special stuff. Um, no, <laughs> most companies don't care. <laughs> so uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm just laughing. Rick says, Brian May has decent resale on his axe. I would imagine so. Um, and then Jason did a super chat. Give me a second, Jason. I'm just looking for a non-super chat. I try to do equal amounts or at least lean, lean, you know, make sure it's not just all super chats. Um, Dead Shred 65 says, hey, Philip, help. How do I apply for a sharp my axe? I have asked here and on Facebook. I have an item that needs help. There's no way to really apply for it. All you can do, buddy, is send me something to ask, know your gear. All I can tell you is I have a folder, okay, at ask, know your gear. I don't want to, I'm not going to give anyone delusions. If you send me any requests for Sharp My Axe, it just, all I can tell you is it goes in a folder. Um, if or when I can open it up to more, you know, things, or if I see the right opportunity, that's another thing too, because sometimes it's a great opportunity. Maybe it's a guitar that I think, because sometimes if uh, here's what happens. Um, sometimes in a repair video, that's what happens. A lot of you guys are asking questions about a certain type of guitar, and then if somebody has that guitar, and I'm like, hey, they, you know, I don't have to worry about obtaining the guitar. I can use yours to do the videos. So um, send it to me. Uh, you know, to to be honest, a uh, good question would be to you guys. I have a question about emails like that. There's so many emails I get, and I respond to a lot of the questions. And um, I can tell you right now, I answer about 80% of the emails sent to me, which at this point is almost insane to even comprehend um, for most people. So uh, when people tell me I don't respond to an email, you understand it's like, I just, just, that's how it worked. You, usually the only way to guarantee I'm not going to respond to an email in that 20% is it slips through the cracks, that happens, or it's just so long. You know what I mean? Sometimes, some of you guys like to write like four paragraphs. You know, sometimes I, 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 I can't help it. It's not an attention span. It's literally just going, okay, I could read this one email or five other emails. And that's how you think of it. I can, I can interact with five people or one. So I sometimes will choose the five faster emails because I think it's just the fastest way to interact with people. Um, but that being said, what do you guys think about, I would love suggestions. This is for me. Just put them in the comments, especially after the videos, uh, you know, playing and you can put it in the permanent comments. What do you guys think about the fact that should I email you even just to say that I saw your email, would you be offended by that? Because I read, I can tell you right now, I glance at every email sent to me. There's no email sent to me that I haven't seen. Like I said, there's a slip through the crack one every once in a while, but I see it. I just don't either have the time to respond because maybe I'm not in the situation. That Think of this, the whole time I was at Gear Street 42, there was no internet at the hotel. Zero. Zero internet. So the only time I had internet was when we were working. So I was dead for a week. I couldn't even really communicate with my family. 
to the most part. So uh, you can imagine, you guys weren't getting any time. My my wife and kids were get, barely getting 10 minutes of my attention a day, and that's rounding up. So let me know what you think about that idea. I, you know, if I just say, I'm not an auto response. Anybody can send auto response. But literally, if I just said, hey, I got your email, you know, would that offend you? You know, why isn't he answering my email? Or at least would it make you feel better knowing that I'm at least looking at what you have, and if I can help or, you know, talk to you, I can go from there. So... So, and uh, always uh, rocking 2009 says, please send the email. I, that's what I instinctively want to do. But sometimes I just worry that all I'm doing is frustrating people on the other end. So, uh, the, uh, <laughs> see, and seriously says, I hate content free email. Yeah, I understand both ways. So, like I said, uh, it would be an interesting poll. I would, I, like I said, it would give me a lot of feedback and uh, and let me know the best way to, interact with you guys sometimes because and so you know uh and i think i've said this before and i know that i'm going on a tirade about this i promise to give answer more questions in a second um the emails are not that there's so many emails it's that nobody emails consistently in a, in a consistent uh well what i mean by this after uh like this after the show i could get a thousand emails in the first hour that's not even an exaggeration i wish it was but then i could go two days and get six and then i could get a hundred and then I get four. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what kills you is because then I answer those four and it's no problem. And then the next day there's 150 and I go, okay, work on this. And I hit it. And then the next day there's six and then the next day there's a thousand. And whenever it spikes, it's almost impossible to just power through that because by the time you get towards the end of it, you look back and go, man, it's been a week. This person's already probably made so many life choices since then. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Joe McKinney says, Phil, new guitar day. Awesome. Uh, says, uh, oh, by the way, love the avatar with you and Ryan. Nice to know your gear shirt, Joe. Uh, says, uh, best polish to use for a 1980 Gibson ES30 or 35. I'm laughing because I'm like, Gibson polish? I'm just, just bear with me. Uh, with finish checking and cracking. Also, uh, how to clean up hardware. Robert Baker made me do it. <laughs> okay, uh, a couple things. First of all, that's a great question because of the fact that this is a real th issue, which is uh, if you have a guitar that has chips in it, I got to drink some water. Give me a second. If you have a guitar with chips in it or cracks, like you said, uh, and checking where the polish, you don't want the polish on the wood. Okay. Um, all you have to do is just make sure that you're being, um, uh, I like the, any, I like polish Dunlop is what I recommend. The reason is, I think I've said this before, if you buy Dunlop and it ruins your guitar, call Dunlop, <laughs> right? Um, I don't know if Dunlop makes their polish, but I know that it comes from their facility. Fender and Gibson and all those guys, they put their names on it so you can call them too, but I like brands that really are like, to me, Dunlop's accessory brand, that's my whole logic. It's it's re really wrapped around this. Um, and the reason is I say this is because when you're working on guitars and you're charging customers, when I'm working on guitars, I'm charging customers. I'm always thinking about like, if something goes wrong, whose fault is it? Is it mine or do is it a company that I bought a product from? I wanna be able to put onus on the correct party, right? If I do the right thing and something goes wrong, it's their fra it's their factory defect or their product defect. I want to be able to go on them. So I like uh, Dunlop for that reason because I think they 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 stay are pretty you know pretty they back their brand. Um, and all I do is use a pump spray, and I like that because you spray the cloth and it just dampens the cloth, and that just helps you. You you just need enough moisture on the cloth to help get enough friction to remove the dirt and grime off the guitar. That's all I use polish for. I use it just enough to grab something, you know what I mean? Grab the finish. So um, I would use that. And um, and then how to clean the hardware. Um, you know, what's funny is there's also stuff for that too. For cleaning hardware, I actually don't use anything. I use Q-tips and cloths and just ru rub, you know what I mean? And same thing. Sometimes I'll even use a, just a spritz of polish, uh, guitar polish um, or, or even water, you know what I mean? Just to get, again, just barely get the cloth damp enough to grab a hold of something. Um, there's all kinds of cleaners that you can use. The problem with that, uh, on your guitar, it's going to be more straightforward, but a lot of guitars, people don't realize that chrome isn't really metal. You know what I mean? It's not in all the cases of it being chrome. Sometimes it's a coating. It's, sometimes it's this plastic fake coating stuff. So I try to keep it easy. I find that just Q-tips and cloths do it for me. So I wipe all that stuff down. I don't over, I don't make it more complicated than it has to be. Um, 
And then for, if you're looking for other brands of products uh, besides Dunlop that you like, I also like Lizard Spit. I've had good luck with those guys as well. Um, and then, uh, hold on, I just got to answer this one because it made me, it was awesome. Uh, it said, uh, well, hold on. I got Melissa. Melissa, too much work for you. And I think people may be disappointed with the short reply. Yeah, I understand that, Melissa. That's why I said, that's why I'm asking. I'm really curious. Uh, um, like I said, it, it's, it's cool. I think over time, eventually, maybe we can hit more of the emails. So, uh, it just depends. Sometimes I get my stuff dialed in and everything's great. Um, and then Bill Dutton says, have you had a chance to check out the Rev D20? I didn't. You know, one thing about this event and all these events, I don't really get to check out gear. You get to experience gear. I don't really enjoy that part of the event. And so if you notice a lot of the videos I make are kind of not the videos you think that you, I'm going to make. Like the, you know, when we had the, uh, uh, you know, Relic and Guitars uh, argument. That video is because that's a video I can make. I have other channels here. They have other opinions. And I want to hear their opinions. You know what I mean? Um, I wanted to hear, uh, I know what I think. And my channel is what I think. So it was great to inject someone else's opinion on my channel because I wanted to is as much as a shake up for me to hear somebody's opinion. It's a shake up for you to hear it too. So I like doing that video, but as forth as reviews, it's almost impossible because the way I do reviews, I don't just take stuff and then go, here it is. Let's check it out. I usually spend some time with it. And so at those events, there's just not enough time to check out stuff and there's no place to do it. So Rev is a product I have never checked out <laughs> to any degree, except for I pedal in a music store once I played it for a few minutes um, because I've never had any personal time to actually experience it. And uh, Rev seems to be the, one of the brands that's at the majority of these events. And like I said, I really think that's cool that they, they sponsor these events. Obviously, they're one of the companies that make all these events happen. And I'm glad uh, that I'm glad that so many YouTube channels can can, you know, highlight the product because I feel guilty. So, you know, that I don't, I haven't <laughs> reviewed a rev product yet. And it's because, like I said, I feel like all I can do is plug into it right in the middle of it and go, you know, so you guys know, a good example of that is Ingle Amps. I played an Ingle Amp with uh, Henning in a video. We just glossed over it. And uh, I, the Ingle guys were very cool and said, Hey, we'll send you out an amp and let you check it out on the channel. That's great. They understood that, you know, they had me there at the event they uh one of the sponsors they brought amps to bring to the event but they understand that that's not the way i work and they were very nice to say hey look well we we want to help you out you know we'll help you help you know get that message out about ingle in a way that makes sense for you other than just plugging into it because when the gate they 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 i went into a room you get an hour in the room that's how it works you get an hour in the room you set up your equipment you do all your stuff and the thing has like three thousand knobs they, I, I actually just said, Please, could you dial in a great sound? And they did. And I played that. And I said, okay, cool. The amp sounds great. I don't know why it sounds great. I don't know how this sounds great. <laughs> I don't know what the knobs do, but cool. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm sure you're going to be seeing Ingle on the channel soon. Um, and uh, I'd love to check out the Ingles because I, I used to have a Fireball and it was one of my favorite amps. Uh, Michael Wade says, Hey, Phil, how do you fi fix a catching string? Um, easy. The string, if it's catching, it's usually catching on one of two things. Your pickup, right? So it's your high E string and it hooks underneath your pickup bobbins. That happens. That's why you see rock stars all the time. Rock stars, you'll see them have guitars uh, and they'll put a piece of tape right there. You ever see that? You know, a piece of like, uh, it's always like black uh, gaffer's tape or something. They put tape there to stop the string from hooking over see and i'm showing you there like that look at that that's what it looks like when it hooks over that so if it's doing that um the trick i use <laughs> besides doing that is i tilt the pickup down a little bit and then i use a little teeny piece of uh, like 600 grit sandpaper or even finer than that and i make sure that there's no uh you know i, I smooth the bottom of the bobbin so that it's smooth enough to where it won't catch that's one thing you can do if it's hooking since I'll use the guitar, I'll keep using this Harley Benton. Um, the other thing that it'll hook on, besides this, is it'll hook o over the side of your string like that. See, like that, right? It looks like that. I'm looking at the camera and stuff. Hope you guys understand. 
There you go. Hooks over a fret. And that is because your fret has probably sprouted a little bit and there's a little gap in there. And the same thing you would want to do is go ahead. And if you uh, watch the Sharp Max videos, you know that there's a fret uh, in file that I highly like. Um, it's from Stu Mac. It's expensive. It's 15 bucks. But I promise you, if you buy that file you will, and you don't <laughs> repair guitars for a living, you're done. You buy that file, 15 bucks, three Starbucks lattes, and you'll never need another file again in your life. It will last your whole life. I burn through two of them a year, and I do a crap ton of repair. <laughs> so uh, that'll tell you how long they'll last you, because um, it'll prob I probably get about 100 guitars out of them, uh, maybe more, right? Depending on if they're stainless steel frets. And um, you watch uh, one of my videos on how to do that or any other video that uh, that's you respect from a, a good channel on how to round that over uh and and just you'll see and and that's how you do it that's how you fix that problem and that's a great idea for a video <laughs> so don't be surprised if you see that video um what else Hanner Gunson, what's up, buddy? He's like, uh, he just did a long time no see, busy. Yes, I think I saw you on uh, on uh, uh, Hinning's live show. So I did get kind of get to see you. I was watching Hinning's show one day, and you popped on there for a second. So yes, it's good to good to say the name out loud again. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Fernando Martin says the Fuchs guitar. He means the tone Fuchs guitar. Uh, how was your experience? Thank you. The Fuchs guitars were amazing. I would put them in probably, uh, one of the best feeling necks I've ever felt in my life. Although it's, a, it's a, it's a, I was going to say a man's neck and I just feel chauvinist for saying that in today's day and age, it seems out of whack, right? Uh, you have to sometimes relearn your language. It's a hefty neck <laughs> right some of you guys are going to get upset you know you upset people either way if you're politically correct you upset people if you're politically incorrect you upset people i guess whatever happens um anyways i have teenage kids so i have to hear about this stuff all the time anyways back to the thing it's a beefy neck uh it's uh, seriously some of the beefiest necks i've ever played but what's funny is as big as they are as thick as the neck is it just plays fantastic. Great, great guitar. Only thing I got negative to say about Tone Fuchs is don't Google Tone Fuchs. <laughs> so I went to, I needed some screenshots of their guitars for the video. And when I Googled it, oh, what comes up is not good. So for some reason, the internet does not understand what you're trying to see. So make sure you put the word guitar in there and be careful when you're searching. Um, so great guitars, uh, fantastic. Handmade, you know, uh, obviously uh, a great builder, uh, very cool guitars. Got a lot of, you know, good hefty price tag. So, uh, okay. Uh, Bill, hey, Bill, what's up? Says $5 hardtail strat or telly? Hardtail strat, hardtail strat or telly? Telly. I don't know why that's my answer, but it is. Uh, Tony, so Goy Burn says... Uh, have a couple beers on me, uh, brother. Get some rest and hang with the fam before you head out again. Yeah, I, I, I will. I actually have been spending some time with the family, so I've been pretty good. That's where I've been dormant, too. Some of it is the trip, and then when I came back, obviously, you guys spend some time with the family. And this trip that's coming up, man, this is short. It's to San Diego, and it's uh, to hang with another channel. So it's not an event. It's just a casual, casual thing. Very cool. So like I said, you'll see what, what happens when I make these videos. They're going to be great because we already know what videos. It's not like, a, what do you want to do? We already know what video we're making. It's a much bigger channel than me, uh, colossally bigger than me. And the videos are for their channel mostly, although we'll probably do something for my channel as well. So you'll be seeing that soon. Um, Jeff Harper says, when is the 335 style shirt coming out? I will, you know, that's the conversation, Jeff, we had, me and my wife had right before I went to Germany. So I will make sure that's the conversation we have tonight. That'll finish that up and get that done for you. Um, and then Waterford Giant says, always enjoy and thank you. Yeah, thank you uh, so much. That's a, uh, thank you. Very kind of you to super chat. And then 
Before we go, I'm going to remind everyone once again, don't worry, I'll answer one or two more questions, but I just remind everybody again that if you live in Phoenix, Arizona or this area, that uh, please look at the link down below. Uh, October 26th and 27th, which is a Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., you can join a class for $1,000 to build a 5e3 amp, which is basically a Fender uh, 57 Deluxe. And I'll be there and you get to hang out with me and I'm going to be working on stuff too and doing some content. Um, you don't have to be in the video, so don't get that confused, guys. It's not, you know, if you're going there, you're going to be in the video. You can, <laughs> right? If you want to be in the video, I'll put you in it. Uh, the um, But uh, you, no, it's not about being in a video. It's about a class. It's just for you. It just happens to be. I'll be there supporting it. Um, I love this idea. I think this is, uh, hopefully this is the future of what companies can do is, uh, is, teach you right what's going to be cooler than teaching us how to build an amp um you know what i mean so uh, it's at roberto venn there's one in nashville i put all that down before and remember we'll talk about that as that comes closer to as well but just letting you know but just remember there's not this is a class where you build the amp and two days later you'll have the amp completed you have built it so it's not a big class okay so there's not a lot of slots so just keep that in mind it's a it's a, uh, you know, if you wait much too long, you're not going to go. Sorry. Um, okay. On that note, let's uh, do two questions and we'll wrap it up and we'll have a good weekend. Um, ah, Joe McCarthy. Uh, uh, Joe says, so is beefy neck fat? Yeah, it's thick. Thick this way. Um, when I think of necks, yeah, that's a good, 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 good question. Cause sometimes we think of wide necks as being fat and sometimes we think of deep necks. I don't think of wide. I always call wide necks wide. So wide would be how wide they are this way, right? This, why can't I look at this camera right this way? How, right? How wide it is. My hand looks so, look at that. So weird. And then, uh, fat necks are how thick it is this way. And they are very thick. Uh, and of course, uh, they sound great. They're great sounding guitars. So if you're looking for something unique and different, that would be one of the br brands I would look at. Um, you know what I mean? And so, you know, they don't make that many guitars. <laughs> uh, they said their max capacity is 40 guitars a year. I got the impression that current production, and that's a dream production for them is what they're kind of implying. I think they make 20 to 30 guitars a year max. Uh, so, you know, if you have one, you don't, you're, you're, you're in a, you're, you're in great company, but you're in a very small company. Um, <laughs> DR Guitar says, if you like boat necks, I've got a telly for you to play. Is it a, uh, is a, uh, oh, why can't I think of his name? He was in poison for a minute. What's his name with the huge telly neck from Fender? I can't think of his name. How weird is that? Anyways, somebody will say it in the comments. I, I can't think of it. But that's a thick neck, too. Um, and uh, BB Ninja says, don't forget to make, leave a thumbs up. Don't forget that there's a 15% discount uh, down below in the store. If you uh, buy any merchandise over the weekend, just let you know. If you're going to do it, might as well get a discount on it. And that does support the channel. That's what it's for. It's there to fund the channel. Thank you so much. Um, Mark Randall says Iron Maiden show. Any thoughts? Yeah, we went to see Iron Maiden this week. What a great, great show. I'd never seen Iron Maiden play. It was amazing because, you know, here's why it was great for me. I, I got to see it with a friend, uh, that I've known since high school. He, he emailed me out of nowhere and said, Hey, I have a ticket to Iron Maiden. You want to go? And he, he lives in Tucson. So we drove up, we went to the show. I'd never seen them. And what was great about that is one of the fears I have, you know, I saw Van Halen, like four years ago. I think that's about right when, when Roth came through. I'd never seen Van Halen before. And I saw Kiss the same way. I saw Kiss when Motley Crue opened for him. That was probably about five years ago, six years ago. And one of the concerns I always have when you see a band that you've never seen before that you really like and you own their albums and I've been listening to them since I was 16 is when you're watching a band that's in their 60s and this is their first impression, I almost fear that this is going to be a bad experience. In other words, like, is this the image I want to have of the band? You know what I mean? Um, so um, what I'm glad to say is that I can say Iron Maiden is one of those bands, man, where um, if this is how good they are now, I couldn't imagine what I missed out with in the past because it was fantastic now. It could only get, you know what I mean? It could only be better, I would assume. So it was great. It was a great show. I mean, it's, it, there's nothing. Uh, I can't imagine anyone who even remotely likes Iron Maiden leaving the Iron Maiden show not happy. 
That was fantastic. Although I say that, and I'll leave on this note, I say that when I was leaving the show, two guys behind us were really pissed off because they didn't play uh, a song. And I don't know which one it was because I, I, the only song I remember they didn't play that I wanted to hear was Somewhere in Time. Um, but they played like The Trooper and they, you know, Run to the Hills. They, I mean, they played because they don't have a new album to support. They were just playing the classics. So fantastic. If you get to see them, I would recommend it. I can't imagine you'd be uh, disappointed. And by the way, they played the uh, place they played had 26,000 people capacity. And it looked sold out. So very impressive. Uh, Will Schaefer says, thoughts on the Eric Clapton strike? I already did that, Will, right? No, hold on a second. Sometimes, sometimes. Yep. Will, did you ask that question already? <laughs> I'm going to leave leaving the show with just... Yeah. Okay, Will. Uh, thoughts on Eric Clapton Strat? I talked about it earlier. I'll recap real fast. Um, I like it. I don't own one, but the Tone King just bought one. So if you are a if you like the Tone King's channel, I would highly recommend... Uh, well, you know what? I'll just bug him. I'll send him a text and tell him he needs to review that guitar. Because <laughs> he really seems to like it. And... Um, uh, the ones I've worked on and played in the past have always been fantastic. They're, they're great guitars. So, uh, I think the mid boost circuit is a cool idea. A lot of you guys are talking about songs. Yeah. See, BC rich 8581 says somewhere in time didn't make the set disappointing. Well, you know what it is. This is this, the sad thing about iron Maiden is they're one of those bands that there's just no way, right? There's just no way. The only way a band like that can even think about playing the hits is a montage. And, uh, I, you know, I'm surprised they don't do that. I would imagine a band with that many iconic songs from so many albums. That's the only way you could do that, man. They need to do a 30-minute montage in the middle of the set and just kind of hit, you know what I mean, 20 songs. Richie Kotzen. Thank you, Joe McCarthy. Yes, he owns the Richie Kotzen telly, and he loves it. Yes. By the way, the Richie Kotzen telly is the craziest neck um so you know uh joe if you like the cots and telly you would love tone fuchs and you would also like vola guitars by the way vola guitars necks are exactly like the cots and if you get their d-shaped neck it's it's legit it's that so um so keep that in mind with those vola guitars because that was my first reaction to the vola i was shocked and then what's funny is this is a true story when i told vola uh i think the owner's name sean uh, he's, uh, you know, obviously he's Japanese, he's a Japanese company. When I said, wow, this reminds me of the Richie Kotzen neck, he nodded and said, that's what we made it like. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's a big neck. Uh, so, and then Brian says soft V question mark. Nope. It's not a soft V man. It's a, it's like a D neck. It's just thick. It's just a, a D shaped neck. The Volas are D shaped for sure. I don't know if the Richie Kotzen's D shaped, but it's just, it's a beefy neck. And so, you know, uh, it is thicker, just like the Tone Fuchs guitars, it is thicker at the uh, like first to fifth fret than it is at the 12th fret. So it gets, it's like a baseball bat. You know when we say baseball bat, can you think big? It's baseball bat, not only because it's big, but it's shaped that way. It gets, th- it gets thinner as you go up the neck and thicker as you go back up towards the, or back down towards the nut. Um, and then BB Ninja says like Phil uh, X Framus neck. No, believe it or not, his neck is a, a thick neck, not nearly as thick, but it is also wide. So it's a different. There's that's the problem with necks, right? On the internet, we can't really describe them. That, but that's how I describe it. Phil X's neck is a little wider, feeling, and thick, but not as thick as like Tone Fuchs and the Richie Cotton and stuff. So on that note, let me end with the uh, quick shout out to the patrons that make this happen every week let me go ahead and go to the page also uh let you guys know we've updated the uh know your gear website and so there's information on there all kinds of fun information including the picture of the week and stuff like that and let's go to the support crew and i'm going to give you a big shout out real quick to james biles lawrence petros rob martha david foy blake bean bean sorry blake blake bean Derek Miller, Gene Graham, Michael Mooney, Alzdar McLeod, Bruce Collins, Andy Dennis, Gary Phillips, Sam Oram, Chief Squatch, Muse Guitarist, Bob Crosley, Todd Flowers, Ta- uh, Tim Farnsworth, Zesty Basil Pizza, Greg Peterson, Dennis Prescott, Craig Parker, Lonnie Hoke, Joseph McCarthy, Anthony Desposito, Brian Stewart, Kermit Jackson, Tim Camacho, Paul Ostrike, Michael Lidner, Jonathan Pickering, Bob Pickwode, Louis and Alvaro, Chris at the Guitar Pit, Jeff Howes, BB Ninja, Zachary Rowe, Justin Mabe, and Jeff Thompson. 
literally are uh, the support team of the live show. They are the sponsors. They sponsor the show every week um, so that uh, we can do this and hang out. I appreciate them doing that, and uh, they help fund the channel, and I appreciate them uh, along with all of you who watch and all the other uh, patrons at the other tiers. I thank all of you. And on that note, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And um, until the next time, I guess we say know your gear, right?